All right, what is going on YouTube? Yet another early Saturday morning. This is basically what you do when you're, you're a car person. Today we got something a little more interesting. No, not my girlfriend. Got my mom with me. <laughs> okay. Basically, every time I go to a Cars and Coffee event, she always asks me, well, what do you do at one of these events? Well, you got nothing going on. Why don't you come with me? Why don't we... Why don't you see what I do? So, I'm just gonna come with me. We're actually gonna go to the Lakeland Cars and Coffee, so roughly 45-ish minutes away. Try to change it up. It's actually an event I've never been to, so I'm excited for that. Try to network with some new cars. This is the first Cars and Coffee with the new camera, so I'm excited for that. See, and you even have, right there on the bottom, I can just pull up. Isn't that great? See? Everyone actually wants to know, what are these vanity mirrors for? I said, it's for women that ride with you, and everyone seems to dislike that. No, that's the truth. That's why you have these vanity mirrors. Got my coffee with me. As always, my mom's got to check her makeup. It's pretty standard. <laughs> yep, so that's a good, I'd say 45-ish minutes. Should be fun. Just going to wait for this car to warm up, and then we're about to head out on our way. See you all when we get there. All right. So already looking around. I can't, I can't keep her away from these cars, but I think she got a pretty nice turnout out here. You got a saline Mustang in the background. Got some Hellcats. Already been talking with some people about my car. BMW M4 in the background here revving. Or M3, I guess. It's a four-door. A good, good turnout. Definitely, people are friendly out here. So this this is pretty cool. I'm actually enjoying this event. My mom's enjoying herself. I like this red uh, uh, '76 uh, pickup. The pickup here. here. Yeah. Well, we'll go check that out in a second. But yeah, man, a lot of friendly owners. This purple one. Yeah. Purple C10. A lot of a lot of interesting cars. So we're trying to get started walking around, talk to some people. Like That's this one? Yeah, I like this one. So I was telling you before we came here, you're going to see a lot of classics that you just don't think you're going to see. Something... Somebody's way. Oh, get out of this guy's way. That's an EcoBoost Mustang. I know I have a subscriber who has a Mustang in that color, the Royal Crimson. You know who you are. Except the only difference is his is a convertible. And informed that is a one year only color that was only for 2018. They've now discontinued Royal Crimson. That's not a bad looking color, it's a little bit on the dark side. What, what look he was going for on that Corvette? I don't know. See, so remember when you have a Porsche, you get you have to be smug to everybody and remind them it's Porsche, not Porsche, Porsche. <laughs> so you got the slant nose 911. Porsche. Just remember that. So you can tell this is the 70s model because you got the whale tail. Very famous design. So that started off as the intercoolers for the 911 turbos. And eventually they made it an option for all of the 911s because everyone liked it. Personally, I think that looks a lot better. It kind of gives it that very sporty look when it has a whale tail. What is this, the 80s? Looks late 70s, late early 80s. Wow. Once again, you can't find the owner if you want to ask him, hey, what year is this? Mm -hmm. You can never find the owner. He's somewhere, he or she. Just get one of those signs like some of these people have. Get a sign. If you got a classic, get a sign to let everybody know what it is. If you know someone's going to ask. So, what, so you think I should have gotten a saline Mustang like this one instead? I don't think you could afford that. Well, this, I mean, this, well, I could afford this year of one, but... How old is this? Well, this is like, looks like 07-ish. This is my dream car when I was in middle school right here, saline. This one's the supercharged. That's what we were talking about. You need a sign on your car. What's this? That's a Fiesta. cars here. I saw him a while ago. Make it look cool. Yeah. 
laser though. This is pretty cool. Is this yours? That's pretty amazing. This one, laser. Definitely not your standard blazer. That's actually pretty cool. You had the S10 blazer. 350 with a 700 R4. This is the Magnum PI car. Is it? Well, his had a. His didn't have. His had a convertible, but. I believe so, yeah, the Magnum PI. I think this is closer to the Miami Vice car. The Testarossa. It was similar to this, I don't know. May have also had a Testarossa. Now I gotta look it up. I know once again I know someone will correct me. Somebody knows. Somebody always somebody knows. somebody always knows. Look, it's a very World War II inspired. Corvette wrap. See, it's got the Hell's Angels third squadron flying tigers. A little history lesson for everybody. The flying tigers were actually a unit that went over to Southeast Asia around 1940 before the Americans were actually in the war. This one's more for me. Yes, mom approves, but. LT1 and C2. Now that is something that's pretty amazing if you ask me, just because it's got the classic look, it's got the side pipes, the knockoff wheels, modern drivetrain. I don't know what kind of transmission this guy's got in, but looks like it's got a five speed and real attention grabber. I just love how clean this car looks. 64 LT4. See again, you get the you get what year it is on the plate, which again I really like that, just because it it settles the questions. What year is this car? Look at the plate. Looks like he's got racing tires. That's what they are. They're oh. Mickey Thompson ET drags. Yeah. That's how you know this guy is serious. Serious. Y'all think it's fast? Put some name some times. What do you think this car would run here? Stick shift nation, so he, he either has a really good swap in it or he really believes in the MT82. I want a woman to trust me like this guy trusts the MT82. <laughs> Got the leather interior, the automatic. 289, so I guess this was this is probably the luxury trim. 427 Cobra in the background. I guess mom likes this one. She's gonna take a picture of this car. I gotta admit, I'm usually not a fan of these faux German plates. This one, I give I give them credit for originality right there. Need that on the top of the car though. Yeah, I love that. All right, story with this. This is Tiger Sunbeam. Some people might have heard of these. It's effectively a sim similar to the Shelby Cobra in concept, kind of the small British sports car with a Ford 260 V8 as opposed to the 289 or the, or the 427. Kind of similar concept. Small, lightweight, British. Have some fun. For many years, these were selling as sort of a bargain Cobra. Mom's taking a picture of it. I guess it means she likes it too. Repeat after me. I've got a jag. He's got a jag. <laughs> That's nice. It's something you don't see every day. Simple two-seater, very 
intimate cockpit. I love how the doors kind of come down. It gives you that very open feeling, your elbows sticking out. Okay, I did, did not think anyone out here had one. What is it? Demon. Dodge Demon. You see, that's, that's how you tell it apart from the Hellcat. See, it's, it's the little angry kitty. What's the difference? It's angry demon. You know how much horsepower this car has? 808. This has... 707. Wow. No, you had to be on the list, pretty much, to get one of these. It, de dealers all may have gotten one allocation if they even qualified. Michael Strahan owns one. I'll put it into perspective people you might know who they are. And you know, actually, you know what I just realized is amazing? You got one demon, two demons. You got two of them here. It's the drag race car. Dodge. This is the first factory car. It's got a trans brake. It's got launch control. And then on top of that, it can do wheelies when you take off. It's, it's a dedicated drag car. So here we go, I got another Resto mod for that. Nice Mustang over there. Yep, this one of course has the LS2 in it this time. It's fuel injected, not direct injected. Again, it looks like he's got, this time he's got a six speed in it. Or six speed double overdrive. You got the carpeted trunk. We got this C10. Track some attention here. Oh, he's got a sign and everything. Well, that's how you know you want. He knows people are gonna come ask questions. That's <laughs> C76 C10. That's pretty neat. It's got all these specs. It's pretty intentional. It's like let everybody know. This is what my car has done to it. My car or truck. clean because the like, C10s are very, very fun. A lot of people kind of discount the C10s. All right, and then once again, we got another, looks like it's a newer motor and a split bumper Camaro. RS. I drove that car for that long. It's pretty nice. Looks like a motor. 106 speed as well. Looked like an LS under the hood with some older valve covers. LS3 according to the license plate. See, once again, let everybody know on the license plate. This time it's like, what motor is it? Let's everybody know. Personally, I think this is pretty clean. I like the look of this. Again, kind of that classic look. Modern Willwood brakes. That's what you need anymore because they. The car probably would have had drums back in the day, and of course it couldn't stop. Right. Sort of the first car we checked out, classic mini, Morse mini, I should say. Working vehicle. Essentially, in, you know, you used to have these in Britain more as like a delivery van type of thing. It's interesting looking because it's. You just don't see vans this small anymore, because obviously now you've got kind of the transit connect sized vans. This is sort of what you had in the 60s. Quarter ton, so roughly 500 pounds. You're not hauling a lot. Honestly, I imagine someone, some business like knife sharpening, working out of this van or, or florist. florist. Classic Chevy Bel Air. Looks like about a 55. I'm, I'm sure that somebody restored all of this. This looks restored. That interior looks a little more plushly padded than the standard one. They did a nice job, though. Oh, it looks pretty nice. It's nice looking motor. Automatic transmission. Classic plate. 
See, I'm gonna go with 55 because it has a 55 tag on it. Oh no, Mom found another favorite, <laughs> Thunderbird. Actually, a little bit of a story for you all. My grandparents were always Chevy people, but they at one point decided to, I guess, glance at Fords. Not sure the whole story, but they actually had models sent to them. Back in those days, if you went to Ford and said, I'd like a model of a Ford, they would send you one. So the car my grandmother had sent to her was a 63 i believe they did this in 1963 they had a, a, it was a thunderbird <laughs> yeah so that's kind of the, the significance she never owned a thunderbird but she had a model of a thunderbird what was the other one a red something galaxy galaxy that might have been i don't know if that was your grandfather's or... that was it has his name on it oh it does okay. has poppy's name on it but it's kind of significant because they, they never were ford people Except for that, they, they got the two models. That was kind of the closest they ever got to owning a Ford. They were dreaming. I guess they were looking. We kind of made a comment. That, yeah, Dodge. That's pretty cool. Nice little dart. This is what they should have made instead of the new dart. Right, that little right. Flop. This is what people were thinking of. This is what you think. It's so long, for the so-called compact. Yeah. This thing's pretty long. Looks like you got the four speed inside. See, I was going for the eight ball shifter look on my car when I got the that shift knob. That was the look I wanted to go for. Dodge Dart GT. Real Dart D GT, not that floppy little four cylinder Dart. And it's a convertible. Back when convertibles mattered. These days, they don't make many convertibles. It's like, your choices for convertible are pretty slim. You go to Dodge, I don't think Dodge makes a single convertible. Yeah, looks like we're about to head out here. It's starting to get good and hot. Plus, we've seen everything a couple times. Talked to everybody who really enjoys talking to. Oh, well, do you have a favorite? Well, I like that red 1976 truck. Um, One favorite? Hmm. Oh, there's several others that I think are interesting. You like the Studebaker? Oh, I love the Studebaker. Yeah, the Avanti. You just, that, you just don't see those on the no. road. That's a museum piece a yes. lot of times, so seeing one out, she's still on the road is quite exciting. Got yes. Studebaker, got all these different Corvettes, a lot of resto mods out. I, personally, I love a resto mod just because they're not something you see every day. Different LS-powered things. Some unique cars out here, a lot of interesting owners. So you go to like a museum or a, you know, a new car show, it's, everything's the same. Everything's as it rolled out of the factory. So I always like seeing cars There's like this. There's a story that goes with each car. Right. Part of the fun. It's try, trying to capture that story and then you meet owners. I know we overheard a Corvette guy telling the story about how much he paid for the car and <laughs> how the dealer called him up and it had been sitting. You just you get things like that. I, I personally always enjoy that. So you'd say you had fun out here. I did. I enjoyed it. So I think I've got. Guy told me the story about that car. We got, over there. We got a yeah. 300 SRT8 next yeah. to us, and the guy had this whole story about how he needed a car because he had kids. You, you just you get things like that. Something at museum, it's just you don't get. Always love talking to owners, meeting new people. Networking is the That's best. That's not one. true. They have stories in the museum. Well, uh, it's, it's how it was found in a barn. Uh, I always like hearing someone who's owning the car and actually driving it. <laughs> That's just my opinion. How Mr. Hera came by JFK's car or whatever it was. <laughs> Usually things like that, but well, I think we're gonna get get going on heading out before yep. it does get too hot. Anyway, you all let me know in the comments below what your favorite car was, because there's a lot of interesting cars to choose from. I guess I say this a lot, but this for sure, I mean it this time, this is an event I'm coming back to, because this a lot of more unique cars out here, not not just your Mustangs, not like this one because it wasn't all Corvettes and it wasn't all Mustangs. A lot of a good Ferraris. Or Ferraris here, so good mix. But anyway, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a thumbs up. If you are stopping in for the first time, go ahead and subscribe. Even mom says that. Mom <laughs> subscribed. So what are you waiting for? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> take care. Have a good day.